Hello friends, this video on sexual reproduction in flowering plants part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us look at the mystery inside the anther because whatever we are going to, whatever we are interested in understanding that is the formation of male gametes that happens entirely inside the anther. So we have to dig deep, deep inside the anther. So anther, as I said, is a bilobed structure. That is, it is made up of two lobes. It is dithecus. What is dithecus? Di means two and thecus is derived from the word theca, which means cup-like structures present in each lobe. So in each lobe, it has two theca. Theca is nothing but the cup-shaped structure. That is what I was talking about, the sacs. So in each lobe, it, it has two theca. So that is why it is called dithecus. A longitudinal groove separates the theca. Now what separates the two sac-like structures? It is separated by a groove-like structure. And what is present there? Now there are four microsporangia which are present inside the anther. Now what is microsporangia? Now micro means small and sporangia represents a structure that produces pores. And these pores can give rise to the male gametophyte. So microsporangia or this is the plural and in singular it is called microsporangium. So it is the structure that is going to produce pores and these pores will later give rise to the male gametophyte. So now you might ask, then does that mean that microsporangia and the pollen sacs which we discussed in the previous slide, are they the same thing? Well, microsporangia is the, is the initial thing that is present. So if you look at it, it is something like this. Anther has two lobes, somewhat like this. Each lobe has two theca, that is, that is why it is dithecus, right? Now, inside each lobe, you have a structure called a microsporangia and these microsporangia will give spores which will form the male gametophyte. That is the spores will later form the pollen grains. Now these microsporangia later over a period of time they form the pollen sacs. Why are they called pollen sacs after some time? Because after some time they become the sacs which hold or which contain the pollen grains. That is why they are called pollen sacs and this is just the top view the way i am drawing it it is just the top view but actually it extends longitudinally throughout the length because you looked at the structure of the stem and right this is how it looks like so i am just giving the top view this is the top view but actually it extends like this throughout the length it extends longitudinally right so in each of these sacs you are going to have the pollen grains, that is why they are called pollen sacs. But basically these uh, cup shaped structures or these structures which give rise to the spores, they are called microsporangium. So now let us try to understand the structure of microsporangium in more detail. Because this is now, now we are gradually going deeper where exactly the male gametes are formed. So, we will look at the transverse section of the microsporangium to have a better understanding. So, this is the cross-section, overall cross-section. Now, if you look at it in more detail, so this cross-section, if you magnify it even more, so you will find a structure like this. So, if you see it even more closely, so if you just put a mag uh, a magnifying glass here and if you look at it very closely you will see that there are four layers which are present around the microsporangium so these structures are the microsporangiums in the four corners right and what are the layers present they are epidermis endothecium middle layers and tapetum so these are the four layers which are present and which is epidermis so they are in order actually epidermis is the outermost layer so this is epidermis next to the epidermis is the endothecium so this layer is endothecium next is the middle layers so where do we have the middle layers so this layer is the middle layer 
and finally the innermost layer that is the tapetum. So this layer is tapetum. So these are the four layers which surround the microsporangium. Now what is the purpose of having so many layers? Because see microsporangium is extremely delicate because the, what is the purpose of the male reproductive organ? To produce male gametes and which part of the uh, male reproductive organ produces the male gamete, it is the microsporangium. So it is just understand how significant it is. So it needs a lot of protection. So the first three layers that is epidermis, endothesium and middle layers, these three layers ensures protection. They ensure that the microsporangium is safe inside. So their job is only to protect it. So you have so many layers, three layers just for protection. What about the innermost layer that is tapetum? Well, it provides the nourishment to the pollen grains. So it is going to provide nutrition and everything to the pollen grains because gradually the pollen grains are going to be formed somewhere here. So the nutrition and everything comes from the tapetum layer. And now what is there inside the microsporangium? Now inside this microsporangium that is at the center of each microsporangium we have a specialized tissue called sporogenous tissue. So this sporogenous tissue is present at the center of the microsporangium. So this is the sporogenous tissue. So what will this sporogenous tissue do? Just now I was telling in the previous slide that microsporangium is that part which can produce pores. So from where will it produce pores? The spores will actually be produced by this sporogenous tissue which is present at the center of the microsporangium. And this tissue is present at the center of each microsporangium. So everywhere you have this sporogenous tissue. Now the question is how the sporogenous tissue gives rise to the male gametes. So that process we are yet to understand. So I hope now you are clear with the structure at least. So here if you see this is again a, a yet another magnified version of the four layers. So the outermost layer is the epidermis, then the next layer is the endothesium and then you have the next layers that is the middle layers. Now middle layers not necessarily it has to be one, it can be more than one also. Multiple layers can be there and then inside that you have the tapetum that is the innermost layer. And then, then inside you can actually see some cells. And what are these cells? These cells are nothing but the microspore mother cells. Now please do not get confused. In the next slide that is what we are going to understand. So for now you understood this porogenous tissue. Now you might ask what exactly is this porogenous tissue? Like any other tissue, this tissue is also made up of cells. And the cells are very compactly arranged and they are all homogeneous cells. That is cells are all of the of uniform kind. And uh, the cells of this tissue, that is the cells of the sporogenous tissue, they undergo meiotic division to form the microspore mother cell. That is interesting, right? Now we are gradually trying to understand how the male gametes are produced. So the sporogenous tissue, it is made up of cells and those cells will undergo meiosis. That is the reduction division. So it will undergo meiosis and what will be formed? It will form microspore mother cells. So this will form microspore mother cell. So let us understand that part. So that is now we will talk about microsporogenesis. So this is the process where we will see how microspores are produced. As I said, the microsporangium's job is to produce spores and the spores produced by microsporangium they are called microspores. So the process of formation of microspores is known as microsporogenesis and these microspores will later form pollen grains. So that also we will see. So formation of microspores is known as microsporogenesis. Like how formation of gametes is called gametogenesis. Similarly, formation of microspore is microsporogenesis. So now let us understand how the sporogenous cells give rise to microspores. Okay. 
So these porogenous cells will differentiate to form neocytes. And what are neocytes? Neocytes are nothing but they are the mother cell. So neocytes are nothing but the gamete mother cell. So these myocytes are the gamete mother cell. Now what do we mean by gamete mother cell? So the term mother itself tells which gives birth to the babies. Right? So gamete mother cell means this is the cell that will form gametes. So that means it is the gamete mother cell. And they are called myocytes or neocytes. What do we call it? Okay. Now let us try to understand the ploidy of the cells here. Now these myocytes then undergo meiosis or meiosis. Now, what are the sporogenous cells? These sporogenous cells which we are talking about, they are diploid. They are the diploid cells. But what do we want in the process of microsporogenesis? What result do we want? We want to form microspores. Right? And what is the ploidy of the microspores? Are they haploid or diploid? So these microspores are haploid. So basically we want to form haploid cells from diploid cells. So what kind of division should take place? It should be reduction division and reduction division is meiosis. So that is the reason meiosis takes place. Now when meiosis occur, then what is the result? The result is that haploid microspores are formed and this is known as since four microspores are formed that is why it is called microspore tetra. Tetra means four. Since four of them are formed so it is called a microspore tetra. So please understand it once again. So the story starts with the sporogenous cells. Where are they located? If the sporogenous cells form the sporogenous tissue which is located at the center of each microsporangium. So you have it here. So here you have the sporogenous tissue which is made up of the sporogenous cells. Now these sporogenous cells are diploid. Now these cells will differentiate to form myocytes. Now what do you mean by differentiate? That means, that means they are not basically dividing or anything. They are just uh, grouping up together or you know, differentiating to form some specialized cells and those specialized cells are the gamete mother cell that is the meiocytes. These meiocytes are again they are also diploid and these myocytes will undergo meiosis which is the reduction division and it will form four haploid cells and these four haploid cells are nothing but the microspores. Since four of them are formed, so it is called microspore tetrad. So this is how microspores are formed. Now what happens to these microspores? Now with maturity, these microspores will dissociate from each other in the tetrad. So something like this. So here you can look at the figure. So this is how a sporogenous cell is. And this will undergo meiosis and it will give rise to four cells. So a tetrad will be formed. So this is how the tetrad will look like. But again, with maturity, they will dissociate to form four separate cells. Now they will not remain attached together always. So as they mature, they will get dissociated from each other and then these will later develop to form the pollen grains. Now how that development into pollen grains take place, let us try to understand that. So for that we need to talk more about pollen grains. So I hope it is clear till here. Okay, so let's go ahead. So as I said, this will dissociate to form the microspores when they mature. visit www.examtheo.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.